everyone has a voice, everyone should speak up and everyone should express themselves. And if you don't, it's very damaging to you. We live in a more digital time than we live in a physical time. People were talking about the next pandemic and the next pandemic people were saying it was, was going to be the mental health. Just hearing about the financial crisis, 14 million people have had felt that they've been impacted, that their mental health has been worsened. I now do a live show, which I had one last night, which is entertainment, live, connecting, getting back people together, but also having conversations about things that matter, which we're talking about loss, which some people suffered from. Start speaking up, start voicing your feelings, start voicing your opinions. Unfortunately, the reality is not everyone's going to like you. Good afternoon, everyone, and this, welcome to the Mind Matters panel. I'm delighted to be, it's a privilege to be on this panel with this distinguished group. Um, thank you so much for being here. This is a topic I think we're all experts in. It's one where I think we're going to learn so much from you as much as share experiences of ourselves and insights that we have personally. Mind Matters is, uh, I mean, just a little bit about myself and I'm sure I'll pass on to the other speakers. So just a bit about myself. So my name is Femi, Femi Youssef. I'm a careers consultant. I'm a generalist. I'm also, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an author. I recently re I wrote a book. I actually wrote a book on my 50th birthday. So it's a dream I've always had. So this dream was something I, I, you know, dreamt of many, many years ago. You know, when you have a passion, you have a passion that you want to fulfill. And, what, you know, some of the things that were being said earlier, I'll, I'll go into some detail, but, you know, we talk about blockchain and everything else. You know, that was something I've always wanted to achieve. So complete, you know, really achieving something like as, as powerful as that was something that I was really you know, glad to achieve on my 50th birthday. And so the book is called Confessions of a Maverick Careers Coach. I work with young people. I work at a university. So I'm actually based at Goldsmiths, Goldsmiths University of London. Anyone here from Lewisham or New Cross, that part of the world? I do live in Croydon. So I'm a, I've lived in Croydon 20 years. I'm a father of four, married. So I'm going to be sharing my insights, my experiences, and, you know, what I've, you know, discovered in my experiences with young people, what other people are saying out there, and really looking to learn from you, because this is, I think, my matters is one of those topics where we all can relate to. I mean, people talk about the pandemic and the impact the pandemic obviously had on all of us. People were talking about the next pandemic, and the next pandemic, people were saying it was, was going to be the mental health, the mental health, imp the, the aftershock from the pandemic. And there is no doubt anyone that works in our communities today, anyone who works with young people and adults as well, you would have felt, you would have seen it. You know, um, I was re reading an article about how just hearing about the financial crisis, 14 million people have had felt that it, they, they've been impacted, that their mental health has been worsened. 14 million people. That's almost one in three people in the country. So I'm going to stop there and pass it on. And at some point, I'm sure we'll, I'll be able to share a bit more and obviously take your questions as well. So I'm going to pass on to um, Caroline. Hi, everyone. My name is Caroline Townsend. Um, I'm the founder of Upfront Conversations, which is edutainment, which is entertainment and conversations. And that came about in 2020 when we was all in lockdown and everybody was at home and was utilizing Zoom. But what I realized is people needed to talk and have conversations about things that mattered to them, um, which impacted their mental health. So by talking and sharing and sharing the stories, I was realizing that it was helping people's mental health. So fast forward, I now do a live show, which I had one last night, which is entertainment, live, connecting, getting back to people together, but also having conversations about things that matter again, which we're talking about loss, which we all, some people suffered from, uh, mental health, and all sorts of different things, autism and so forth. But I also am an advocate for neurodivergent communities as well, um, and trying to merge that with technology so that they can have you know, a level playing field as everyone else. So that's me. Hi, I'm Aisha. I'm from Wiz Media, a communication coaching and consulting company. I believe that um, it's really important for us to be able to communicate effectively to improve our mental health. I think communications and mental health are very, very interlinked. So some of the areas that I think that communication helps with mental health is firstly on a personal basis. When you're able to be to communicate effectively and be confident in your communication, you have so many benefits. One of them is that you truly get to know and understand yourself. Um, you also form connections with other people on a more deeper level and you're also able to reach your own inner potential and I think I just feel quite profoundly about this. I come from
from an Asian community where my parents were immigrants to this country. And as is very common and very rife within the South Asian community in the UK, we are all very um, encouraged um, to suppress our emotions as children, in our teenagers and as adults. And it's something that I've had to break free from myself. I've realized how damaging and negative that is. And that's partly why I have an absolute passion for communications. Um, also, I believe that good communication is really important if you want to build harmonious, positive relationships. Because when you can express your thoughts, express your feelings, and you're aware of them, you can have more collaborative relationships, whether that's with your family, or whether that's with your friends, um, or whether that's with your peer group. So um, the message is, that for every single person out there we are in a time of high emotional intelligence and we all have the right to express our thoughts express our feelings and express our opinions and as a society I believe that we should all be encouraging others to do this because I have seen the negative repercussions of emotional suppression in many people within my community and I think it's very damaging and I think that's it's time for that to move on and that's one of the things that I work on very heavily in my work whether that's in the workspace and in corporations, whether that's with individuals. You know, it's something that I'm very, very strong on. So also, um, yeah, so I do think that, um, you know, some of the areas that I do work on is, for example, effective communication, um, also being a good, powerful public speaker, an impactful and authentic public speaker. I'm also very big on, you know, building confidence in my clients because I think confidence is so key. And this is authentic confidence. I believe that every single human being has the innate right to be confident. I think we're all born confident. We're all born with the ability to be good communicators, but I think it's taken away from us during the process of our adolescence and as we get older, and it can be stripped away from us as we go through the schooling system, as we surround ourselves with peer groups. And I think every human being has the right to reclaim their confidence and to reclaim the natural communication skills that is every human being's right. So I guess my, my message with my company is that everyone has a voice, everyone should speak up and everyone should express themselves and if you don't it's very damaging to you on an energetic level on a psychological level and it will impact your personal relationships it will impact your social relationships and it will impact your working relationships too so my message to everyone today is if you're not currently doing it start speaking up start voicing your feelings start voicing your opinions and encourage those in your life in your family in your community and even those who keep silent like the introverts encourage them to start using their voices so we can be a society that expresses ourselves confidently and clearly Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Andre Duffus. I run a company called EmpMax, um, which is empowering people um, to give them a positive outlook on life. I've listened to three great people speaking thus far, and I want to go back to the speaker that was here just before. His name was Ninja. He said that we live in a more digital time than we live in a physical time. And I really want to talk about that. We spend majority of our time on our phones. We spend majority of our times trying to look good. We spend majority of our times trying to be and creating a social image for other people to like. Now, unfortunately, the reality is not everyone's going to like you. But unfortunately, the word system that has been played out on our youth, on adults as well, is actually having a massive effect. People are affected by words. There is that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But unfortunately, we live in a time where social media is more word-based than anything else. So the word does stick. So when you have to be going on social media, you have to be prepared and you have to be aware of the social implications of going online and being safe whilst being online. Sometimes we post images expecting to get a like and we get a dislike. Sometimes we put something up to be in a positive image and someone gives a negative response. Now we need to be able to be a society that begins to teach our younger generation on how to navigate through these social platforms that we have. We have jumped into this platform. Some of us are growing into this platform, but the youth are born into this platform. So we have to build up a mental resilience for them to be able to go forth and use AI as a tool that's going to be beneficial and not sacrificial. We have to make sure that these technologies are not taking away the communities, taking away times that we spend with one another. Because COVID was a clear example that people can stay in their homes and still have communication. I don't need to talk to nobody. I don't need to spend time with anybody. I can pick up a phone and I can have this with my family members. But reality 
humanity means we still need to have that human connection. We still need to have that connectivity where we are able to emotionalize what we're talking about. I always talk about downloads. What has been your download for the last five years? Think about it. For three, two of my years, I was stuck indoors. Someone said it was prison. So now I'm just actually coming out and being reborn again into this new way of life. So all I'm saying is from Max is to be very mindful of how you position yourself. Guide your children. I've got loads of children. I've got five and one on the way. So, you know, I'm guiding them with the most ferocity because technology is powerful but mental health is disastrous so we have to look at it in both ways did you know that mental health in men especially between the ages of 40 to 50 is the highest suicide rates why we need to start looking at things like that we need to look at young women especially between the ages of 13 to about 18 going on social media posting pictures and not getting likes what is their mental health capacity going to look like so those are the things that Max does you can find me at the back to talk further details well 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 how do i top up all these amazing people well i have to say that it's um, amazing to be here and thank you all so much for staying and actually you know kind of being involved with this panel it's very very important Mental health is a huge, huge problem, not just in the UK, but worldwide. So I'll start by introducing myself very quickly. So I'm Alison Chiwara. I am a corporate mental health consultant. I'm based in Scotland, but my work goes beyond the breadth of Scotland, beyond the breadth of the UK. Because as I know, we have 8 billion heads around the world, around the globe, all of which have some mental health of some sort. And mental health is not just bad mental health. So there's good mental health, poor mental health and bad mental health. So as we speak about mental health, I think that's really, really important to break down that sort of stigma that when we're having these conversations around mental health or mind matters, then it's all negative. Well, not necessarily. I actually have to take time to look after my own mental health. That doesn't mean that I have bad mental health. So, and I think that those are some of the things that will explode. So beyond the corporate mental health, I am an advocate for women in tech on so many levels. I've had my own ed tech, which was very successful. And uh, beyond that, I continue to get involved and collaborate with a number of organizations. And today I've already learned so much. And I think that I'm going to take away a few collaborations from today. But I've also recently became uh, an African global ambassador for women in blockchain talks uh, with Lavinia, who was here earlier on. So really, really exciting space right now for us to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that are there because if we don't, somebody else will. In terms of um, mind matters, it's such a vast and very complex subject. Our mind processes over 70,000 thoughts a day. Can you believe it? That all is happening in your head, subconsciously. Imagine if your brain was a running person, running 70,000 miles a day. That's a lot. That's a lot of running. Why am I mentioning this? I don't like talking statistics when we're just talking about this casually, but it's really important that we understand that even our brain needs a rest. We need to take time out for self-care.